Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we're talking about world citizenship. Our guest, Arthur Canegas, is president of Future Wave Inc., a nonprofit organization dedicated to shifting our culture of violence to a culture of peace. He is the director and producer of The World Is My Country, about the amazing adventures of world citizen number one, Gary Davis. Canegas produced War Without Winners, narrated by Paul Newman and filmed by Haskell Wexler, a compelling TV documentary on the nuclear war issue. He also worked on the 1983 most watched ever made for television production called The Day After, which Ronald Reagan credited with moving him to negotiate and sign weapons reduction agreements. Uh, Arthur, welcome back to Talk World Radio. Thank you. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be on your show, David. I've been a great fan of yours and your books and your work for many years. <laughs> Same to you. And uh, I, I understand people are going to have a new opportunity to see the world is my country. Can you talk about that and briefly about the film for anybody who still doesn't know what it is? Well, let me do that, but let me first explain uh, why I'm still in my wetsuit today. I was just out there boogie boarding. I live down here in Baja, an hour south of San Diego. I'm a world citizen. Uh, you know, can travel, be in the U.S., can be anywhere. And uh, came in and uh, didn't really have time to change, so I figured I'd just <laughs> leave it on for now and go ahead and do, the, do it this way. Uh, but, you know, uh, before I get into the movie, it actually feeds right in well. Uh, when I was out boogie boarding today, we got out there and the waves were very slow. There was, you couldn't even push us in. And, it is, and and we said, OK, let's visualize the waves are coming up stronger. And by the end, we had these big torrents of waves. And then Mal uh, uh, um, uh, Leslie, was, who was Melanie's the co-producer of my film, but <laughs> Leslie was the one I was boogie boarding with. And she said, uh, Wow, th that these waves are getting really big, and then we got a really big one. So you know, it seems, and it seems like that happens over and over again. You know, what we visualize tends to happen, and it, and uh, I I've learned that since I was a kid. I learned that uh, uh, you know I would meditate in Quaker meeting, whatever, and if I could instead of dwelling on all the problems, could picture you know be aware of the problems, but picture viscerally and clearly what I wanted, it would happen. And so I started on a mission to say, hey, look. Uh, if visualizing has an impact, let's find let let's do something about the fact that every single movie and TV show and everything. I, I, when I started this, I decided we need a vision of it. Well, let me let me back up a second to get to how we got to that. Uh, you mentioned the ABC spe uh, ABC special the day after. Uh, I filmed Paul Newman, uh, and I was doing the nuclear war research for that film. And I would get nuclear war nightmares because, you know, the, the, they needed to know to build the sets, how much damage there would be different distances from the epicenter. So I was in Washington, D.C. I'd go over to the Pentagon Library, get their film clips of nuclear war and everything and be sending it out, fax before we had email, <laughs> uh, to faxing out the data to the uh, crew so they could build the sets. And uh, I got so depressed uh, that I started having nuclear war nightmares because the deeper you dig into it, the worse it was. And then. Uh, I was meditating in in friends meeting, a Quaker meeting, and I I found that the I was so depressed about you know end of the world really that uh, it wasn't motivating me to action it was it was weakening me and then I remembered this uh, song we'd sing as kids <laughs> it said it went it's George Fox song there's an ocean of darkness and I drowned in the night till I came through the darkness to the ocean of light and the light is forever and the light makes us free. I will dwell in the glory of the light, said he, walk in the light wherever you may be, etc. And I realized that at the same time there's this incredible ocean of darkness, there is an ocean of light. So many people everywhere trying to help others and, and, and work with others, even all the people doing bad things are doing it because they, they want to be helping their, their, their fellow neighbor. Even the suicide bomber is trying to do good. He's willing to die for Allah, for, for his fellow human beings and we just are getting different stories and i realized what we have to do is change the story it's the wrong story that's leading us to have all these wars and to think that we have to fight each other and everything and if we and if we can start creating a story of, of a vision of what we want to move toward that'll have a powerful impact and like i said i went to 
start when I started this project, tried to find out if there are any positive visions of the future. I went to back then it was video stores. I went to a video store and every picture about the future was a dismal, dark future. I found one that's called a boy and, his, and his, a boy and his dog about a future. And I said, oh, that sounds positive. And even that where there was a boy and his dog walking through the ruins of a nuclear apocalypse. You know, it was like they were, they were all bad. And I said, no wonder we're heading into if our visions create our if our visions create our reality, no wonder we're plunging in the wrong direction. And so that's when I started the project of working on creating films that create a positive vision of the, f of the future, which does get us to our first film. Uh, I mean, to this film, we've done a few before, but get us to this film, which is The World is My Country. Isn't, Arthur, isn't the, the most aggravating thing about movies about the future that they suppose humanity to have invented incredible technological breakthroughs that make nuclear bombs look like child's play, uh, and yet to behave essentially like two-year-olds start fistfights every three minutes, uh, you know, and somehow to exist, to, to, to not have learned to behave in a, in a kind way, to not have de developed the least emotional maturity or conflict resolution, or, you know, and yet to have these incredible destructive weapons everywhere that make, you know, that make nuclear weapons look like mere toys. I, I, I don't think any of the futures that we see in movies about the future are even possible. I don't think those two things are compatible. Yeah, because there won't even be a future for humanity if we don't fix this. And uh, yet, and yet, we're acting in exactly that way. We're we're putting all of our incredible energy into creating these, the, you know, the most amazing weapons to destroy each other, and a fraction of that into the other. Now, let me just tell you, this is all based on a myth. It's all based on the story that we've learned, told ourselves over and over again in these movies. The story we tell ourselves over and over again is that. You know, here's the, the 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 damsel in distress. This damsel who's going about her ordinary life, perfectly fine. This big bully comes along, starts attacking her. Every we try to reason, we try to do everything, but finally the hero comes along, blows away the bad guy, and rides off into the sunset with the girl. And the players are interchangeable. It can be the the pe people of, of 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 Iraq or Afghanistan or, or for or for Russia can be the people in, wherever each side they all change the sides. But it's always this idea that somehow killing bad guys solves problems. And yet, think about it, in your life, do you know anybody who killed bad guys and lived happily ever after? Did anybody ever, did that ever happen, really? And in the world, we see the most, let me, let me say, the idea of military power is an oxymoron. That means a word that is, is really contradictory to itself. There is no such thing as military power because, <laughs> take a look at it. The most mighty empires in the world with the most incredible, like you said, science fiction, amazing technologies and all that, we couldn't fight jungle people in, 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 in Vietnam. The, 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 the Russia couldn't fight these Afghan tribesmen who just had a minuscule amount compared to them. Russia couldn't beat them. Then we came in for two decades pounding on the people of Afghanistan saying we're going to we're going to protect women's rights and what did we do we made it we pushed the most horrible people into power we pushed the most impressive things so we did the opposite Arthur, you're like my model world citizen, and you're using the word we to mean the Pentagon. Why, right. Why do you do that? Well, the, the, the many, it's not we, it's it, but it is. It is the popular culture that does that. And, and in the popular culture, we be, people believe that. Now, the reality is, and you know this very well, and so come, someone might say, well, okay, so if they're really, if it's really military powerlessness, what about you know? What about uh, uh, what about the people who fought back? You know, like we see in uh, whether it was with the Vietnamese or whatever. Well, and in this case, if we take the current current war that Russia is fighting, look at Lithuania. I that's where my grandfather came from, and I went and I talked to uh, to uh, the president. I interviewed the, the for, first head of state of Lithuania. Uh, who led the singing revolution, uh, Landsbergis. And, you know, they, the mighty Soviet empire, that was when they never didn't want to break up or anything. Lithuania was the first country 
to break away. And they did it with a singing revolution. And, you know, when I went back there, the tour guide said I was climbing up the TV tower and I would say, oh, there's tanks coming down Revolution Avenue. And everybody wouldn't run away from the tanks. They all run toward the tanks and they would surround them and they would sing songs and they and they and they. And they stopped this Soviet invasion, all just the kind of same kind of invasion we saw this time. But they stopped it with a singing revolution. Uh, Fourteen protesters were killed. They, they, they're very sad about those people. They honor them every year. Fourteen people. And they got their country intact. Now, compare that to the situation now where, yes, they're putting up a valiant military battle. But look what they're, how their country's torn apart and everything. And yet the nonviolence was so much more powerful. So military power is powerlessness. And that leads to uh, to the question of then what are the alternatives? And uh, there are two big ones and our film addresses one of them more than the other. <laughs> well, you have to tell us what at least one of them is now. <laughs> OK, well, OK, the two big ones and one you're quite aware of, one we just mentioned is, is, is the power of nonviolence. Uh, the phrase, the first one, and that is, for example, uh, you you take you take the situation in in the United States where we had apartheid systems in the South, and and if 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 every if, and then Martin Luther King played a powerful role in in making that a nonviolent revolution. Now, if it hadn't been, if every time a black person got lynched, a white person got lynched, if every time a black church got blown up, blacks blew up a white church. That war would still be going on. They can go on for thousands of years. They never, they never would have. We never would have had a, a a black president, a black Supreme Court justice, things like that. Now those changes that have happened, and and nothing's perfect in it, but they were so much more powerful because it was nonviolence. And all over the world, you know this, David. Case after case after case, every single study of every the ones that are successful, most successful revolutions are the nonviolent ones. And, you know, the American Revolution, I mean, Canada got their revolution without a war. Uh, you know, Gene Sharp points out that America actually, uh, the colonies actually won before the first shot was fired because of a nonviolent revolution, the Tea Party, the, the, the colonies no longer cooperating with, with uh, Britain. And yet the hotheads had to go ahead and have a war anyway. But the war <laughs> is not what got us our independence. So, uh, that's the, the, the so the one positive power that's more powerful is nonviolence, but the other one is law. Uh, if you take that same case I mentioned of our civil rights movements, I thought I silenced that. Sorry, uh, that the uh, that if you take uh, uh, the first thing was that we had in in the South that people were willing to go on the line and face the oppression nonviolently, but then you had this the Civil Rights Act getting passed, you had the power of law coming in. And law means that you take the societal norms and you codify them and you create an enforceable system. And I think it was three legs. I think it was that. And then I think it was media. The fact that uh, people saw what was happening on TV all over and brought out the people power, the, the, the power of the people watching it. So I think those three legs were a part of it. And they apply to all of these. And Gary's story is really about a guy who, uh, <laughs> who, 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 who pulled himself out of the war system and created a vision for how we can build world law at the global level above the nations that divide us. And that's really the key. If we can't create a system of uh, an alternate security system that involves, I think, all three of those legs, but primarily it needs to have a way that we create law at the global level. We are speaking with Arthur Canegas, whose film is The World is My Country, about the story of Gary Davis. Um, Arthur, it seems to me that right now, the top two rogue pirate outlaw nations uh, are the United States and Russia. They uh, together account for a majority of the weapons dealing. Uh, they're the biggest war makers, treaty abstainers, veto wielders in the UN Security Council, shutting down democracy. Uh, and you have 200 other countries putting up with this. Uh, and you have the United States, at least voices in the U.S. government and media, suddenly demanding the use of international law, not just against Africans, but against Russians, too. But 
presumably with permanent impunity for the United States, right? With that Russia should answer to the International Court of Justice, but those bills were supposed to pay for our crimes in Nicaragua 60 years ago. Forget about that. How do, how do we as world citizens, how do the world's nations outside of the big criminal imperial governments uh, advance international law without without hypocrisy i i, I mean if, if russia gets held to the standards of law will that would that be a step forward or a step backward would it advance the rule of law or the rule of hypocrisy well i think you're absolutely right that the, the that the powerful empires and and the fact that russia that russia and the united states are on the security council can veto things and so on makes for an insane system and i think What's happening is that people have for years been kind of like begging and pleading uh, people, uh, these existing nation state systems to somehow uh, uh, reform themselves, to change from the, for, to, to change from the top down. It's not going to happen. It's going to have to be bottom up. Now, here's the amazing thing about Gary's story. Gary was this song and dance man on Broadway who uh, was so horrified at bombing civilians during World War II and his own brother getting killed, that he ended up giving up any national citizenship, declaring himself a world citizen, and offering himself to the UN as their first citizen. This all happened when the UN was meeting in Paris. <laughs> and this created like a, a worldwide stir. There was huge uh, 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 movement created by this with uh, uh, Albert Einstein supporting him and uh, and and uh, 20,000 people rallying with him at the velodrome and so on for world citizenship. It's a long story. I don't want to get into the whole story, but it's an incredible story of the power of one man. But he came to a realization. You know, he, he, he interrupted the UN session and said, the nations you represent divide us and lead us to the brink of total war. What we need is one government for one world. And if you won't do it, step aside and a people's world assembly will arise from our ranks to do it. Well, they haven't done it, folks. And we need that people's world assembly to arise from our ranks. Now, how does it happen? Well, with this incredible Internet, you know, Gary was in the forefront. When you see the movie, you, movie you'll see he was in the forefront of talking about how we invent systems of bottom up uh, democracy, how we begin to create uh, a way that. Uh, well, what he realized <laughs> is that, you know, the Declaration of Independence says it's the right of the people to institute new government. Well, does that mean old guys in gray wigs or is that you and I? And if it's our right to institute new government, why are we asking uh, the existing states to do it? They're not going to do it. Their, their power is based on uh, on 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 the situation <laughs> on, on the situation they've, of world anarchy where they have to protect us against them in this in this in this in this world that broken and where, of course, you, the whole power of the military industrial complex, the whole rest of that. So what it's going to take is that. We need to unleash the superpower. You see, the, uh, uh, the the people are locked in these boxes called nation states, so we can't operate globally. Originally, when corporations were first started, they were under the people. They get a twenty-year charter to build a railroad or something like that. If they didn't do it, uh, they would have their charter pulled. They'd be out of business. But because they operated globally, and we operate as inside the nation states, they'd say, well, if you regulate our pollution, if you if you tax us, whatever, we'll just move, move, move abroad. And they gained all the power of money and they came on top and they have the best politicians money can buy. And, and some people say, well, okay, let's try to force them back underneath. We can't do it, folks. We have to break out of the box and take our rightful place as the citizens, as the governors of this small planet. And that's what Gary talked about. How can we create a totally new system using this great, power of the web and internet and so on to interactively uh, uh, create a system where we the people who are actually the source of all, all all their power we're the source of their power if we withdraw our money and our funds and and, and create our own alternate global interactive way of what gary called bringing to the top the highest and best wisdom of each individual uh, and and bring it bringing the wisdom of the whole into the power of a uh, of having an impact, we can unleash the superpower, which is the will of the people of the planet. <laughs> and well, I'll say more about it, but I don't want to 
just rattle on and on. So go ahead. Well, what do you What do you think, uh, Arthur? If you can say it in words that are acceptable on the airwaves, uh, of the fact that today we see peace activists in the United States and elsewhere going out and rallying not only for more weapons to be shipped to Ukraine, uh, but for complete celebration of a national flag, the Ukrainian flag. It's everywhere, the, the, the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Uh, how do we get people to, to wave the, the world flag? Well, that that is really really uh, a, a key question, uh, and and I think I think part of it starts. Well, first of all, let me just say it's interesting that when Lithuania was the very first country to break away from the Soviet Union with a nonviolent revolution, we didn't see people waving Lithuanian flags, celebrating it. We we hardly even noticed the most incredible thing. Here's this incredible Soviet Union, a country actually breaks away from it. And oh, well, but there wasn't a war, so I guess nothing happened there. I mean, it's like it's like we're so set in this myth of, of, of the hero of, 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 with a big gun that when something breaks outside of that of that story, when it doesn't fit that story, we can hardly even see it. It, it becomes almost like invisible. We see these big nonviolent revolutions and, well, let's go on to the next item in the news. You know, <laughs> there, was, there was almost a big fight, but nothing happened. So <laughs> let's go on. You know, it's, it's and so I think part of it is uh, is is the is, as I mentioned, shifting the culture of violence to a culture of peace. We need to start creating movies, television shows, uh, pictures that start uh, creating a new story in our culture. And that's what I've kind of dedicated my life to and what we're doing at Future Wave, which is working for alternatives to violence through entertainment, the wave is. And uh, uh, and we we have a podcast called the People Powered Planet Podcast. And and we come on, come on each week talking to various people, including you. You've been on our podcast about how do we build an, an, an alternative security system? How do we build a, a world that works um, and um, I do think a big part of it is uh, is in the stories we tell, because right now, you know, the the uh, uh, you're right. The Ukrainians are fitting into that story of here's the here's the little guy of be, be, is beating, fighting the big, big, the big, the big bad guy. And so, you know, rah, rah, let's rally behind it. But that's not peace. That's leading us toward nuclear war. I mean, what's the what's the end game of this thing? I, I've been just sort of trying to handle, uh, try, trying to wrap my mind around the past couple of days since I saw this polling result in the United States that about 70 percent of people in the United States believe the current conflict in Ukraine uh, is likely to lead to nuclear war. Uh, mm. Now, I'll grant you that the majority of them may believe uh, falsely, of course, that nuclear war is not that dangerous, that it can happen in one corner of the globe and not affect the rest of the globe and whatever nonsense they believe about nuclear war. But some of them have some notion of what nuclear war is. Uh, and and you've got a, a, a strong majority believing it's being risked. Uh, and I'm extremely confident you've got well under 1% of people in the United States doing a darn thing about it, even making a phone call to their Congress member, nothing, you know, and it's that, that disempowerment, that, that sense that people have that there may be, uh, you know, problems facing us, including, oh, I don't know, all life on earth uh, ending rapidly, uh, but we can't do anything about it. There's, there's not an election today, so I can't vote. So, you know, it, how how do we persuade people that we need them to actually do something uh, and that doing something can uh, very often have an impact? Well, I think I think the key is that that people are seeing uh, it's exactly what you said. They feel like they don't have a handle on it. Everyone knows what we're against, but they don't know what we're for. Uh, now, what we need to do is start creating the image of, of what is this alternative? I see you're wearing the, the, the shirt put out with our film, the World Citizen shirt, the world is my country. And that's what we need. We need uh, we need to start a massive movement, not just against war, but for world citizenship. We need to if you watch our film, you'll see that uh, Gary actually was on the verge of that. A huge movement got going back in the early uh, in, in 1948, 49, uh, 50. But then the Cold War came along and, and it got swept into the dustbin of history. If that movement had succeeded, and there are many, a uh, large number of U.S. congressmen and everyone else for it back in those days, 
we we would what an incredible world we would have ha have now if we hadn't wasted all that money and resources on 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 war and militarism if we had found a way to come together as a planet and to be able to to to, to solve our problems in better ways wow what what a difference it would make and it can moving forward but i do think the key thing is that we need to start uh uh, being able to really put out in a, in, 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 into the popular culture, inject into the popular culture, a vision of how how a people-powered planet could work. Because one reason people are scared of, gov of, of world government is they see these horrible governments in the world and say, what if we had you know, an oppressive police state government? And, and Gary says it in our film. He says, does world government scare you? Well, yes, it does. If it's the same old forces of power and money controlling our lives from behind closed doors. I mean, that's kind of almost what, what's happening, really. There is some governance, but very, wow, going the wrong direction. Uh, but there's no way that we, the people, have any voice at the global level. There's no no way to amalgamate what is the will of the people at the global level. And what, we, what he, Gary's talking about is how we invent a new interactive system that's not Win, 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 lose. One side gets 40, 51 percent. So they vote for all kinds of things they don't really agree, believe with. And, and so they can win their side or the other side. We need a way that uh, interactively, uh, uh, well, Gary called it synergy, uh, a, a great way that we come together. Uh, I can explain more detail if you want, but more, uh, we come together to in a way that gets what are the solutions what are the problems people see how do they how do they want to work with others and how do they come together to create the vision of what we want and then there's a much greater commonality than if we use this old divisive system Arthur, I, uh, sadly, we've got about two minutes left. I wish it was two hours, uh, and I would love it if you could tell people where they can get a world passport, where they can see the film, The World is My Country, how they can follow uh, you and your work. Yes. Okay. Well, if they come to theworldismycountry.com, I was just going to pull out the, my world passport here. But anyway, if they, if, if they go to theworldismycountry.com, uh, you'll see there a passport tab where you can click to get the world passport. The world passport has been stamped by virtually all the world nations at one time or another, although it's not, uh, there's also many times people get, they have stopped for it. It gets confiscated. So it's not a, a universally recognized travel document, but it is at least on occasion has been accepted by almost every country. Um, it's basically, uh, uh, anyway, that you can get, you can get the film, you can click there to see how you can watch the film. It all starts at theworldismycountry.com. You'll see the People Powered Planet podcast there and so on. So that's the that's where to go. Uh, and if, if you if you stood up, we'd see that right at the bottom of your T-shirt there. It says theworldismycountry.com. Well, we radio, radio. There it is. The world is my country. There it is. <laughs> Usually I wear that shirt during podcasts, but I rushed in with my boogie board suit. <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid the people listening on the radio may have trouble uh, seeing it, but they they can go to talkworldradio.org and watch the video and uh, and see it. Um, uh, Arthur Kanegas uh, is the director and producer of The World Is My Country. Highly recommended. Uh, you can also go to worldbeyondwar.org and we have links to to, uh, to get your world passport. Um, Arthur, thank you so much for everything you're doing and for coming on Talk World Radio. Well, thank you very much for your important work. And when people do come over to our podcast, they'll see we also have our producer, Melanie Bennett, working with us, uh, playing a key role in all this. So uh, do join us at uh, the, world is, the World Is My Country. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.